Hi! I want to start this video by saying that if you know about Minerva University and you're thinking about whether or not you should apply or not, you should definitely do it right now. I don't think I'll have anything to say that you won't already know from like reading about it online. I want to talk about like my personal experiences with it and just being admitted. I haven't left for San Francisco yet, but I have been admitted three or four months ago, so it is long overdue that I talk about this. But I do want to say, if you have any questions that are like really specific, I'll try my best to answer them. You can message me on Instagram and I will see what I can do. Um, also, the application itself is really simple and straightforward and it's also quite fun. It is like a series of different, I think six challenges you do and um, there's like maths tests, IQ tests and you do a kind of personal statement like an essay about yourself and it's also free and online so it's really really not something to be worried about and there's only two outcomes so <laughs> it's definitely worth a try if you're interested. The application is also merit based which means that Although you might have seen the acceptance rate being like 1.9% or like 1%, it's not really a competition against other students. It is really about you and what you can do and what you're interested in. So even if they had one year and there was a huge wave of loads of like ideal Minerva students, they would all get accepted because of the merit-based system. So you don't need to feel like you're kind of fighting against other people for a place like a lot of other competitive universities, which is really nice. And it means that you can complete your application a lot more honestly and in a way that feels more personal. The 1.9% acceptance rate has given Minerva a lot of publicity. But another one of those things is traveling to seven countries. So the first year you spend in San Francisco, and then in the years after that, you spend one semester or four months and picking up American language <laughs> slowly <laughs> um, in Seoul and Hyderabad, Buenos Aires, uh, I'm trying to remember them all, <laughs> uh, Berlin, London and Taipei. I think that's all of them. Yeah, so you basically travel the world and you do like I'm gonna say online learning, but it isn't really online learning um, So you travel to these six countries and you do Seminars, I think they're called. I don't know the right word for it But you basically have lessons every day two of them with a professor, but the professor isn't allowed to talk for more than a certain period of time. So it's a lot of student discussion and lots of active learning. They really implement like the science of learning into how they conduct their lessons. So even though it's online, you're still really, really encouraged to engage in it. So it's not just you sitting there and taking in information passively, which I really like. And it's something that I was worried about when I was applying to UK universities, but I'll talk more about that later. Even though you're learning online, there's also an in-person aspect. So I think it's like every week or so, you go out into the city with your class and you will do something in the city that involves working with the community or working with local organizations. And that counts as part of your schoolwork. So it's like a necessary part. You have to be there for it. So it's not something that you can like do from somewhere else. It's not like lockdown coronavirus sitting on your laptop in a dark room. I'm also really excited on like an unrelated note. But if you see my other videos, you'll see that I've made these videos called suitcase challenges, where when I was like, 12, 13, 14, I think I would post these videos of me trying to put all of my things into one big suitcase. And I think I tried to narrow it down to like even a carry-on suitcase. And I know I have more stuff now, 
but I'm just thinking that because I'm going to Minerva, now I'll have to do like a real suitcase challenge where I actually do have to fit everything into a suitcase and then I travel with that. But it's also kind of a shame that I don't have like a cool video of me opening my results from Minerva and being like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like I've seen other people make those videos like that would be so cool if I made something like that. But unfortunately, I completely forgot that I applied and I opened my results when I was sitting down like super tired at the end of a really long day I'd just eaten and <laughs> I just opened the email without even realizing what was in it. I just opened the file and then it started playing this video and it like there was loads of music and I was like, what is this? <laughs> and it was like, you got admitted. It was really, really strange because I had no expectations whatsoever. I wasn't pinning I wasn't pinning any hopes on getting into Minerva. It was the only international university I applied to. I originally was just going to do what my school wanted me to do and apply to like the UK universities, like the best ones I could get into, things like that. So my original plan had actually been to do, well, not a plan, more of like a wish, <laughs> an aspiration. <laughs> had been to go to Cambridge because they had a new course, which is really important. If you are in the UK and you qualify for their requirements, this could be like really, really an amazing opportunity for you. Um, so Cambridge has a new course called a foundation year and the grade boundaries are only BBB I say only, that's still pretty high, but it's lower than what people imagine when they think of Cambridge. But if you are disadvantaged in some kind of way, so if you get free school meals, or if you live alone, or for example, I am from a single parent household and I also spent a year and a half off of school during my GCSE years because I was sick. So that allowed me to apply for this course that does all of the arts and humanities and I think you also have to be from a public school as well so you can't be from a private school and you also need to be a UK student. If you are eligible for this then they basically pay for you to live in Cambridge and they pay for your food, they pay for your education, they pay for your accommodation, they pay for your fun money, like just to, just to spend on whatever you want and then you study all the arts and humanities, all of the social sciences. It is, it sounds like a dream come true to be honest. Um, and I really, really, really wanted to go, but I failed and I was so disappointed and it was awful. <laughs> and I wasn't really sure what to do after that. I guess I was sort of planning to take a gap year and reapply the next year, but it had been a difficult process applying with my school. So like I said, I come from a public school and not many people go to Oxbridge, not many people go to Russell Groups. It's not the most amazing high school. Um, and because I had been ill for a year and a half during my GCSEs, my predicted grades for A-level got dropped. So they were a little bit lower than what they were supposed to be and that was really difficult. But I thought if I try again next year, then I can apply with my actual grades and maybe it'll go okay. And I did have backup options. So I also applied to Durham, Bristol, uh, King's College London and St Andrews so I did have backup offers but I wasn't really keen on them I picked to study philosophy because I wanted to learn about like thought and critical thinking basically which is strange because it ties in so perfectly with Minerva's sort of way of education I suppose Minerva's way of education is more of like 
like business orientated and like how to be successful after university and then what I wanted to study was like about the mind and sort of about all subjects because originally philosophy was like the root of subjects and that was where science was derived from and all of these different concepts and I wanted to learn about that so it was perfect but <laughs> philosophy <laughs> degrees don't sound great especially when I studied subjects that people expected me to go into more specialized fields for um, so yeah I was in this kind of strange phase where I wasn't sure on anything because things hadn't really gone to this very vague plan I'd set out um, and then I remembered Minerva and I had heard about it once when I was I think 14 so four years ago and I was like wow this sounds perfect but at the time I was like in a wheelchair I was really really ill and even getting better did not seem realistic to me so I forgot about it but then I think my mom brought it up and I was like oh that's great okay and she convinced me to apply so I did the entire application process in about four or five days maybe less I can't remember but <laughs> I just remember like completing the application still doing the challenges on the final day of like the day the admissions process closed and it was it was a rush but I was lucky I got in and it was also great that you didn't have to really rely on your school for anything except like a vague thing saying your grades and whether you have any like uh, I don't know what it's called like disruptance record or like but yeah it was great because when I was applying for my UK universities there was a lot of judgment that I wasn't expecting from my teachers because I would basically just sort of come back out of the blue after being sick. I worked really really hard to get high grades and to try and get, get into like the best university that I could and I mean there was a lot of questions raised like are you sure you can apply for Cambridge are you sure you can do that it was like are you sure you're smart enough so it was nice not to have that kind of judgment from my school the only thing I had to do was sort of go in with a form and be like can you please fill this in for me and then I could take it back and that was it I did watch um, some other youtubers about Minerva while I was applying and it seems like a lot of them get absolutely slandered online like <laughs> I'm a little concerned about that but I want to mention one thing that seems to crop up a lot is that Minerva is technically a liberal arts college I think so if you have a really specific career path in mind if you want to become a doctor, a dentist, a nurse an engineer or something that requires a lot of specific subject knowledge this is not the right place and you can't expect it to be the right place for you it definitely prioritizes like breadth over depth even though you do learn about specific things it's across a range of lots and lots of topics so please <laughs> do not be telling me about how it's not the perfect school for everyone it's not going to be and I don't expect it to be some kind of like dream institute at the end of the day it's still a university and I think even if you were to get into somewhere like Oxbridge or Harvard or Yale you would still find things about it that are just not what you want or not up to your standards and you can't really expect them all to be fixed for you just because of a name. I will be very happy to answer any questions and you can follow me on Instagram and I will post about it on that because I have been completely silent about everything <laughs> surrounding what I'm going to do after high school. I mean not only to YouTube, 
to like my normal friends as well. I'm sorry everyone, <laughs> I'm back and that's it. I'll see you soon, bye.